Hello and welcome to C-Sharp Logical Puzzles, Games and Algorithms. In this video we will code a little algorithm that will create a low shoes magic square. Before we go any further, let's examine what the low shoe magic square is. So everything is being based on a 3x3 board. We will start the board by placing numbers 1 through 9 in it in sequential order. Of course, we could just place the numbers on the board randomly or in any way you want. How we start the board isn't important. The important part is to have the computer change the numbers so they form a magic square. Ok, so the low shoe magic square is a square where all the numbers in the rows, columns and diagonally have the same sum. As you can see there are 8 possible outcomes. And you can see that in each case every row of the square has the total sum of 15. So like 8 plus 1 is 9 plus 6 is 15. 4 plus 9 is uh, 13 plus 2 is 15. And of course every column of the square has the same sum. In this case it would be 15. Or actually in every case it's always 15. So 8 plus 3 is uh, 11 plus 4 is 15. Or let's go to a different case. And you can see 6 plus 1 is 7 plus 8 is 15. And diagonally it's the same thing, like 2 plus 5 is 7 plus 8 is 15. Or the other way, 4 plus 5 is 9 plus 6 is 15. So we will code a small program that will have the computer randomly switch two numbers at a time and keep switching the numbers all randomly until the board forms a magic square. We'll start with sequential board and we'll keep switching the numbers around until we form one of these magic square boards. Now this is a brute force method. We simply run the program until the computer finishes making any one of these 8 magic squares that are possible. And everything will be generating randomly, so it may take the computer just a couple of seconds or minutes or hours, who knows. Well, really, it'll only take a few seconds, I promise. Ok, are you ready to code this? Let's start. Alright, everything will be coded within our program class. This exercise is all about loops and random numbers, this is not an object oriented programming exercise. The first thing, as always, is to declare a few variables. So we know that we have a 3x3 game board, so we can keep our board as two dimensional array. We need access to our board from all the methods of the class, so I will declare it in a class level and I am going to make it static because we only have one board and we only manipulate one board. So we need to keep the state of the board throughout the whole program. And of course since our main class is static, then all the class level variables will be static too. Ok, so here is my two dimensional array, I call it numbers. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I will simply place numbers 1 through 9 on the board sequentially. So I can initialize the board right here and assign the numbers to each index. So here is my initialized uh, array of numbers. So the first row is 1, 2, 3, the next row is 4, 5, 6 and the third row is 7, 8, 9. Alright, next we need a random number generator. So we will create a variable of type random. And this too will be a static variable. So here's my random and these are the only two class level variables that we will need. So now let's create a method that actually generates random numbers and randomly switches the numbers in the array. So here's my method and it doesn't return anything because everything which is the switch in the numbers or the cells will be performed within the method. And you can see that it is static also. Alright, so how do we actually randomly switch values within the two dimensional array? Well, let's say that the computer chooses to switch number 2 and number 5 in our array, which is these two numbers obviously. So the thing is, it doesn't choose what values to switch, it simply chooses two random indexes within the array or on our board. And in this case, it's going to be index 0 and 1, that's our number 2, and index 1, 1, which is the second number. And we will simply assign the value held in index 0, 1 to index 1, 1. So 5 will become 2, and we will do the same for the first one, so 2 will become 5. Now to do the switch, we will need to temporarily store the value from one of the indexes. Then we will actually assign the value from index 1, 1 or from index 0, 1 
to the temporary value, we will then switch the index of the second row and place it into the first one, or the value from the second row into the first one, and then we'll take the temporary variable that we stored, which is the original value from the first row, and place it into the second row. Now, each cell on the board has two indexes. Like I said, the first one would be 0, 0, then would be 0, 1, 0, 2, and the last one would be 2, 0, 2, 1, and 2, 2. So the first index represents what row the cell is in, and the second represents the column. So to store these two indexes, we can create a simple array with two elements, and we can create one such array for both the cells we want to switch. So let's go back to our coding, and I'm going to create two integer arrays with two elements. Again, one array for each of the numbers that we are switching. So here's my two arrays, very simple. And now I can generate a random number for each index. Because our board is three by three, we can just generate the numbers between zero and two with two included. So we'll generate a random number from zero, one, and two for both our rows and the columns. And I need to generate two such numbers for each array. So we'll have four random numbers all together. So here I am generating a number between zero and two which are the possible indexes of the board and assign it to zero index of our number one array. And then I generate another number from zero to two for our first index of the number one array. And I'll do the same for the second array, which represents the second number that we are switching. So let's say the numbers generated are zero, one, two, and zero again. What it means is, that we will be switching a number stored in our numbers array in position 0 and 1, that's the first two numbers, so that would be actually number 2, with a number stored in index 2, 0, which is the second number, and that would be the number 7. Okay, as I mentioned, we need a temporary variable to store the indexes of one of the cells that we want to switch. So we can create an integer that will store the value currently located in the cell indexes of number one array. So here's my integer, I simply call it temp because it's just used to temporarily store a value. And the value I'm going to store is from the numbers array with the index that was generated and is now stored in index zero and index one. So our temporary variable will have the value that uh, is the numbers with the index of 0 and index of 1. So again, if the first two numbers generated were 0 and 1, then the value stored in the temp will be 2, because that's corresponding with the index 0, 1 in our board. So I am storing the value that is in the first cell that we are switching. So now I can replace the value in that cell with the value in cell number 2. So I will simply assign the numbers array of the first generated indexes a value that is stored in the cell with the second set of randomly generated indexes. And if it doesn't make any sense, well, it will soon. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the numbers array and I want the index that is the first number. So it's the number one with the index zero and number one with the index of one. So it's the same as we just passed to the temporary. But now I can replace whatever is there now. In this case, it would be the number two. That's the value stored at the beginning of uh, when the program runs. And I'm going to assign it the number that is in the numbers array that we just randomly generated for number two. So it's going to be the number two with the index of zero and index of one. So my number two was now replaced with number seven. So now it goes one, seven, three, four, five, six, still seven, eight, and nine. So now I need to replace seven with the original value, which was two. And that value is being stored in the temp variable. So I will go into my numbers again, and I'll go to my second number and replace it with the first one. And like I said, the first number is now being stored in the temp. So now two and seven were switched 
and the other is 1734562. And that's it. After this, the values from the two completely randomly selected cells were switched. Now we just need to check if we created a magic square yet and display the results. 